Hello and welcome to New Planet School. In this video, I'm going to talk about the basics of DC motors. DC motors are all around us. Um, they occur in lots of different appliances. Always they have some batteries in them and they tend to make things spin. So here's a bat battery pack here and it makes the drill spin. Dustbuster type things that usually have a rechargeable battery with a fan in it that spins and causes the suction. And these are all around us. Inside of them is usually a motor that looks something like, like this. Um, the power goes in this side. You usually can see some wires inside. We'll talk about why those wires need to be there. And there's something that spins. And we want to know how these things work and how to build them. So, question we have is, how does a DC motor work? And what we'll see is that that's the same as the question, how can I make something spin using magnetic fields? And if we can understand how magnetic fields work and how they can make something spin, we can design and understand how DC motors work. So let's start off by thinking about magnetic fields. What is a magnetic field? So a magnet is something that can push or pull on certain materials, usually um, metals, and they look like this. Here's a bar magnet, and here is a horseshoe magnet. And if you've ever played around with one of these, here's an example. I'm pushing one here. I can pick up paper clips and other sort of metallic things. So magnets have poles, what are called poles. They have a north pole and they have a south pole. And usually, but not always, magnets are labeled. Here's N for north pole and here's S for south pole. And that's really important that, that magnets have poles, as you'll see. It's crucial to the way a DC motor works. Now, these poles of these magnets exert forces on things like you saw on the paper clips. We can make a map of that or what's called a force field by putting little iron filings that respond locally to what the magnetic field is and they align themselves and they give us essentially this sort of a map of what all the forces look like and you can see they're strongest at the tips and weaker in between. But let's see what happens um, when you try to bring one of these poles near one of the other poles. Like what happens if you bring another magnet close to this one that has a north pole? Is that different from bringing another magnet close to this that has a south pole? So let's take a look at what that, what that looks like. Here I'm bringing a north close to a north and a south close to a south. And notice that they repel each other. They do not want to be near each other. But if I rotate it and then I move them so that I have opposite poles, they stick together quite nicely. Very important property um, of magnets that we'll use and understanding how a motor works and how to build a motor. Okay, so a compass is a little magnet that feels the magnetic field from the earth. And the earth being fixed as it is, um, produces a magnetic field that pushes on this little magnet right here. This needle is actually a magnet. So no matter where you are, um, this will point towards the Earth's um, north pole and that way you can always tell which direction is north is no matter where you are. So here's an example. I'll take this compass and I'll rotate it and you can see the needle tries to stay in the same position always pointing north. Um, but if I bring another magnet in there I can overwhelm the Earth's magnetic field and take over that magnetic field um, with another um, little magnet. And in fact you can take that magnet and make the compass needle spin. And you think about that, that's what the basic idea of a motor is. We want to use a magnet to rotate another magnet. And you can see it's pretty easy. Let's think about this. If I take a magnet next to another magnet, I can make it spin. As you can see here, the magnet on the right is spinning and it aligns itself. The problem is, there's one problem, is once it's rotated all the way around, it stops. And so this is the problem that we have to figure out. If we could make it spin like that and keep going, we would have a motor. All right, 
So the first thing we have to do is reduce the friction. One of the reasons that the magnet stopped is it was sitting on, on, a, on a wooden table and as it rotated, it was rotating very slowly and there was too much friction. So let's imagine we're going to put a rod through the top magnet and in fact that might be the rod that spins that makes the motor that makes the drill work or the fan work. And by suspending it like this, we're going to reduce the friction. And the magnet at the bottom will keep it fixed in place. So what will happen? What's going to happen if we let go is the north down here is going to attract the south, as we saw, and also the north is going to repel the north. And that's going to make this magnet want to spin, which is exactly what we want to happen. And now, because it's suspended um, here conceptually, um, it should have no problem with friction. So what will happen? It will come down, it will rotate, it will rotate, it will rotate, and now at this point, the attraction between the north and south right here is very strong. Um, but because it was already spinning, it has what's called angular momentum, and it'll actually keep spinning. Now, the problem we run into is that now this south pole of the magnet is attracted towards this north, and the north is pushing on this other north up here. And what that does is as it's rotating in this direction, it's actually going to slow the magnet down and eventually it'll stop right here and it'll reverse its direction and it'll start to head back down here. And of course, that isn't what we want. So, let's ask this question. Can we switch the magnet off somehow? If we could switch the magnet off somehow, we could make it be pulled towards the lower magnet when we want it to be, but not be pulled towards the lower magnet when we don't want it to be. Is it possible to think about doing that? What would that do? Let's think about it. Okay, so let's try switching off the rotating magnet. So we started in this position, it goes down, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to encase the upper magnet in green to indicate when I turn the magnet off. So it comes down and it's turning, and right now I switch it off and I'm encasing, I'm showing it encased in green. The magnet's off, so it's just spinning. There's no forces on it whatsoever. And it just keeps on spinning. And then when it gets here, I turn the magnet back on. And now there's forces on it. It's starting to spin faster and faster. And then I switch it off. And now it just drifts and drifts and drifts. And then I turn it back on. The forces are on. It's again, it's the north is pushing on the north and it's pulling on the south and it keeps on going back to its original position and the whole process starts over and the, and the top magnet should spin and spin and spin. So that's all we need to do is figure out how to use two magnets to do that. Now the key to this is that the magnets that you see pictured here like this one are called permanent magnets. And there's nothing we can do to turn them on and off. So what we need up here is what is called an electromagnet, which is a way of making a magnet using electricity. And if we could switch the electricity on and off, we can turn the magnet on and off, and we can make a motor. OK, so the way this basically works, you can think about the idea of a motor, think about it like a swing. Whenever you're swinging on a swing, you push your feet forward at just the right time when you're moving forward, and then you stop and you move your feet back at just the right time, and you're basically push, putting the right force in the right direction at the right time. It's a type of a phenomenon that's called a resonance, and that's exactly what we want to do, is switch that magnetic field at exactly the right time to keep the uh, motor spinning. Okay, so let's try this idea. How can we do this? We need a very strong permanent magnet. That's the magnet that was at the bottom. And we need a way of making an electromagnet so that we can have a switch um, to turn it off and on. So let's think about how we can do that. Okay, so the first thing is it's worth having fairly strong magnets. So 
if you're going to build one of these, try to get neodymium magnets. That's the element that sits right here in the periodic table. They're very strong magnets, and, and that's actually f fairly useful because if you don't build your motor very efficiently, um, you'll need stronger magnets. So it's worth getting some of those. The next thing that's very useful is to get what's called magnet wire, which is just copper wire that has enamel on it. So you can see this, this wire is has this red enamel on it. That's very useful because it doesn't have a thick plastic coating. You could, you could use standard wire that has the plastic insulator, but this is nice because the insulator part of it is very, very, this very thin red enamel that you see there. And it needs to be insulating, as you can see, because we need to be able to remove the insulator in just the right way. And here what I've used for this video is, is 24 gauge. You can use anything like that. And again, it's pretty easy to find this type of wire. Very useful. Okay, now here is how you can build your own DC motor using those parts. So the first thing is I got a wood block so that I could mount everything on it. And then I got two paper clips, which are here and here. And those are going to hold the electromagnet. Um, there's other ways of, of mounting it, but that's the way I did it. And I mounted those onto the board using staples and a glue gun, but you can use screws or, or whatever you need. Just make sure that it holds it down pretty tightly and make sure that there's a little hole here and a little hole here for the wires to go through. Okay, next thing you'll need is a battery holder. Um, you could hook this to a power supply if you have one, or you can just hold it next to the battery if you want, but I found it was just very inexpensive and much nicer to have a battery holder just glued to the wood just to hold it in place so I didn't have to um, have to deal with it. Okay, the other thing is the magnet wire, as I mentioned. This is the magnet wire here, coiled. And what I did is I just took a tube, like a D battery or something, and coiled it around about 20 times. And then when I was done, I wrapped it around here to hold it really tightly and then fed it through here. And the same thing here, wound it around here a few times and then fed it through that hole. Um, you want to make sure that it's fairly well balanced um, when you do that. Okay. And then, of course, you need the magnets. And, the, and here I, what, I don't have the magnets mounted to the wood block because I found it actually pretty interesting to hold them in my hand and move them around and, and understand how the magnetic fields were actually working. But you could mount them down here with, with glue if you wish, but you have to definitely connect it to the wood block. But as I said, it's actually more interesting to hold them in your hand because I think you can um, learn a lot more about the way the uh, motor is working. Okay. Now, the key thing for the motor, of course, is how can we turn the magnet magnet on and off at just the right time? That is the, is the key thing that we need to do. Now, if you look at this design, what's happening is the battery, the current is flowing through this wire. It is, I soldered it to this paper clip, so the current can flow up here, and then it flows into the wire wherever it's touching. And the same thing for the other side comes up here and wherever it's touching. So if you look at that, there's a loop that comes up like this. And then the magnet wire is actually resting by gravity on the bottom right there. And that is where the electrical um, contact is being made so that the current can flow up the paper clip and then into the wire and then through the wire and into the coil and on. So that's an important thing. So what what I did is I've got sandpaper and let me clear this and what I did with the sandpaper is this side of the wire I sanded both sides. In fact not really both sides but all around it. I removed the enamel from all sides. So no matter what rotation angle this coil is at, there's always uh, contact right here back to the battery.
But as you can see on this side, this side is different. Notice that it's still red on the top. And so what I did is I sanded the bottom. And so what happens is, in this case, if the bottom is sanded, there's contact. So the current will flow. It'll come through here, go through here, go around here, around this thing, make an electromagnet. So there'll be um, this thing will produce a magnetic field, and then the current keeps flowing through here, and it goes back to the battery. And if I brought those other magnets close to this, it would interact with this magnetic field and cause the coil to rotate. But if it went as the coil goes around halfway around, now the enamel part of this wire is in contact with the paper clip and there's no conduction whatsoever and the magnetic field here turns off and the coil simply drifts halfway around and then when it's halfway around again contact is made here again and it cut, turns the magnetic field back on and it turns it on and so you get a magnetic field for half a rotation and then it turns off for the second ha half of the rotation and then back on and back off and it's just like this like I showed you earlier it gets a kick halfway and then it and then it, it just spins with with angular momentum for the second half okay so one just piece of advice um, when you make these homemade motors you might want to spend a lot of time making sure that that coil is very balanced. Um, one of the things that can happen is you can end up doing this and it'll kind of wobble because you have too much weight on the bottom. So make sure that everything is nice and straight and very even. In some of the videos I'm about to show you, you'll see what happens. It can kind of wobble. So uh, make sure you get a really good balance. Okay, so let's see what this looks like when it's operating. And these movies were taken with slow-mo, so you'll see it slow down. And it spins nicely. It wobbles a little bit because it's not perfectly balanced. And then you can see it actually gets to be quite fast when it's spinning. Here this is slow-mo too, so it's, you can see, it's rotating and then it'll speed up a lot. This is sort of interesting, it, it actually worked with the with a whole bunch of neodymium magnets off to the right. And so it's really fun to place that magnet in, um, in, in different places and see what you can get to work. Here's some more, really slow motion, and then it speeds up. And then here it is spinning, and this one's really wobbling. This is very, very much out of balance. But you can see the basic idea of how it works. Here again, the magnets are way off to the side. So you can play around with the orientation of the magnetic fields. So, okay, so with that, um, go make a motor. Um, try out some different things. Here's some things that you, you should try to play with. What happens if you turn the magnets around? I've only talked about one particular orientation. What if you flip it? Um, what happens to the, to the motor? Does it still work? Um, vary some things. Vary um, the number of turns in the coil. Um, as I was showing you in some of those little videos, put the magnets in um, in different locations and and see what happens. What happens if you use different batteries? And, and here I was using two um, two AAA batteries, which is about three volts. What if you use a D battery? What if you use only one? What if you use four? How does that affect the motor? Um, but more importantly, come up with a lot of your own questions and see if you can. Uh, find the answer to those to, to each of those questions. Um, that's actually really what the fun part is here. Okay, and so with that, um, thank you for coming to New Planet School. I hope to see you here very soon.